Hey guys, I'm James Thomas with Jaybird Labs, and in this video I'd like to quickly demonstrate how node code can be used to bridge functionality of two devices that aren't directly connected. You'll see that even though these two pies aren't directly connected, I can turn on and off the LEDs on the bottom pie with a button connected to the top pie. There is no software limitation in node code on how many devices you can bridge like this. It's more up to the number of devices that your network router will allow. This opens up a lot of possibilities for distributed computing, as well as taking advantage of all the capabilities that the different single board computers that are hitting the market offer. In this particular setup, I have a first gen Raspberry Pi Model B on the top and a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B on the bottom. Let me walk you through how this simple project was put together. On the top Pi, I'm using a simple button that is connected on one side to the 3.3 volt rail and the other side is connected to the GPIO pin 17. Pushing the button will then cause the pin to read high on the Raspberry Pi. On the bottom Raspberry Pi, I'm connecting a red LED to GPIO pin 17 and a green LED to GPIO pin 27. The other sides of each of these LEDs are simply connected to the ground to complete the circuit. Now that the hardware is done, let's change over to the software side of things. So now we're in the desktop software and we've already created a program to hold our nodes. The next thing we need to do is to create the nodes to represent each of the pins that we're going to be bridging. As you can see, I've already set up the two devices and already have the GPIO services installed on each of them. If you need help with any of this, there are quick tutorials on nodeco.io as well as on YouTube to cover all these getting started topics. Alright, starting with the bottom Raspberry Pi, the Office Pi 2. I'm going to add a GPIO pin writer for each of the LEDs. I'm going to drag each of them onto the program canvas. Change the names of each of them. And then I'm going to change the pin number using the wiring pi numbering scheme. So I'm going to do the same for the uh, top Raspberry Pi that's connected with the button, except I'm going to use an interrupt pin reader. This type of node will fire every time the state of the pin changes. Now that we have our nodes, let's try wiring together the button and the green LED. You can see that the green LED is now bound to the state of the button, so that when the button is pressed, the LED is on. Let's wire up the red LED now. That's all there is to it. We hope that by showing you these quick videos that you're inspired to build things. If you do, please show us. Jaybird Labs is on Google Plus and Facebook and we'd love to see what you've created.